So last week I posted this video that's playing here, which was to do with impedance matching and how you calculate the maximum power transfer to your output device. And I got a comment from this person, Electrocat, Electrocat 9, I like the name, and they said basically, hi, hey, please show how to measure a laptop's headphone impedance. And I thought, great, another idea for a follow-up video. So how do you measure output impedance? Let's take a look. So what we're looking at then, here's my laptop, and what we're trying to measure is the output impedance of this headphone jack here. We're not measuring the input impedance of a set of headphones or earbuds, whatever you want to call them. They want to know what this output impedance is. But before we do anything though, I will actually measure this because I want to get a typical reading from a set of headphones so I know what kind of input impedance range we need to work with, okay? So if I just clip my impedance meter onto here, I'll go onto the ground leg there and let's go onto one of the channels. I'm set to one kilohertz because that's the mid frequency of the human hearing range. And we've got 19, 19 ohms impedance there. Let's just check the other channel. And 19, let's say, let's say 20 ohms, okay? Right, I've just checked my stock of resistors and there you go, I've got 22 ohm resistors there. So they're pretty close to the input impedance of the headphones. So this is what I'm gonna to use to put on a, a dummy load on the output and it'll all become clear as we go through it. And what I've done is I've got one of these adapters, standard TRS jack there, and it breaks out into a little terminal block. Nice to be able to connect up my load resistor there. So I've got a 22 ohm resistor between ground and the what's, what's effectively the left channel. And let's just put my meter on and see what we're getting, make sure we are getting 22. So I'll just measure that. And pretty bang on, 22.03, good enough for me. Let's carry on. And as you can see, I've got Audacity running here. Audacity is a free audio tool that you can get off the internet, it's a great tool. And all I've done is I've configured it to drive a one kilohertz sine wave, okay? If I just click on play, you can hear it coming out the loudspeaker. Let's stop that. And now what I've done is I've just shifted my laptop over a bit. I've got an audio splitter here. So it's the same TRS jack going into there. It's just that I've now got two outputs so I can plug a separate device into there. I've got another one of those adapters there, no resistor this time. It's just purely so I can measure what the voltage output is coming direct from that jack. So there's, without any load, other than the meter of course, but that's mega ohms, you can ignore that. With no load on this, what voltage are we getting? Because that will be the source voltage ignoring the, the output impedance, okay? So let's measure that. Now you might think, well, how come you're measuring it with a multimeter? Surely that's only for measuring 50 or 60 hertz when you do mains. Well, actually your multimeters can measure much higher frequencies. I think this goes up to 10 kilohertz bandwidth. So one kilohertz um, sine wave is perfectly fine. So let's put it onto my volts range. There we go. And we will make sure we select AC, of course. There we go. And it's not playing right now, but if I start it, you won't hear it because it's, it's coming through the jack now. The jack's turned off the, the speaker output. And there we go, we're getting 1.2 volts. So we'll make a note of that, 1.2 volts with no load. Now, if I get the same type of adapter with my 22 ohm resistor, you recall, which is comparable to the headphones, and I plug that into the second jack, that's effectively putting the same load, the same impedance as my headphones onto there. And what do we get now? 0.329, let's say 0.33. All right, so we got 1.2 volts with no load. Let's just take that out. 1.2 volts with no load. And with load, we got 0.33 and that was a 22 ohm resistor. All right, let's go and have a look at the mass behind that now. 
Okay, this represents the circuit that we've just tested. This is our laptop here, the, the headphone output jack. You've got some driving circuitry to create the audio, but that will have some inherent output impedance. That's the factor we don't know and we're trying to work out. And then over here, we've got the load, which would be your headphones or your earplugs. And we use a 22 ohm resistor to simulate that. Um, so we now know that that was 22 ohms because that's the dummy load we used. That without a load was 1.2 volts. So the source voltage coming out here, RMS, one kilohertz tone we had, is 1.2 volts. And we don't know what this is, this, this uh, output impedance. That's what we're trying to work out. So if we just rearrange the circuit like this, and now I'm showing it in DC, because it, as I said before in previous videos, it always makes it easier to follow, all right? But it makes absolutely no else for this purpose. I've just rearranged it so it's kind of vertical rather than the other way around. Um, but if we now call this R1 and this R2, this looks incredibly like a voltage divider to me. And if you don't know what a voltage divider is, look back at one of my previous videos. I will leave a link in the description below, and that will talk you through it. And if we just fill in the details that we know, we know that the source voltage we had was 1.2 volts. We know our load resistor was 22 ohms. And when we had that load on there and drove our one kilohertz tone, we had 0.33 volts across it. And if that's 0.33 volts, then you must have 0.87 volts there because you've dropped from 1.2. So 1.2 dropped by 0.87 gives you the 0.33 there. And what we're trying to find, of course, is this. What is the value of that resistor? Well, first of all, if you've got 0.33 volts across a 22 ohm resistor, then Ohm's law tells us that the current across that, I'm calling that IR2, current across resistor R2, will be my 0.33 volts divided by my 22 ohms, which gives me 0.015 amps or 15 milliamps. Now, of course, that's the current in the whole circuit in this scenario because it's a series circuit. If I've got 15 milliamps going through this resistor, then I must have 15 milliamps going through that resistor as well. So R1, therefore, is 0.87 volts because we've got 0.87 volts across it divided by 0.015 amps. So R1 is 58 ohms. That's our output impedance. So we now know that output impedance on our original circuit is 58 ohms. We solved it. That's the output impedance. Um, and we now know, of course, we've got 15 milliamps of current running through here. So therefore, my headphones, when I plug them in, they're getting 5 milliwatts of power. That's what they would have been driving at with my 1 kilohertz sine wave at the volume that I had it set to. And if I pump those figures into my Excel chart here, I've got the V-out set to that 1.2 volts and the output impedance, the 58 ohms, which we just calculated. And you can see at 58 ohms, we peak again on the output power. So up at this point, we are now, rather than 5 milliwatts that we had with 22 ohms, if we have 58 ohms to match the output impedance, we get well over 6 milliwatts. All right, so again, match your input and output impedance gives you the maximum amount of power. So that's how you measure output impedance. If you found this video useful, then please click like. And if you haven't done so already, then please click subscribe. Okay, catch you later.